You are now listening to the Super Coach Experience. The Super Coach Experience. Super Coach Experience. The Hey Jake, hey Jake, do you have Tedesco? Do you have Tedesco? Do you have Tedesco? Tedesco? <laughs> And welcome back to the Supercoach Experience podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Savage, and I have a full panel here today at the Bella Vista Hotel. I'm joined by Tim. Hello. Uh, AKA the Shady Supercoach Lurker. Yeah, look, we don't take that bit too seriously, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, look, we've just, I've given myself a title just to uh, fit in with a few of the other, uh, I guess you could say, people in the community. Yes, and uh, you actually got a question super coach related in the Shady Supercoach Lurkers inbox today. So you could say you're an influencer now. Oh, I'm an influencer. I'm influencing people. Um, <laughs> I, I think there might be a few uh, things in my um, email about, you know, sort of wearing branded codes for certain companies and stuff yet, but I haven't sort of actually read the contents of the email just yet. Only fans coming soon. Um, <laughs> and I'm also joined by Jake, a uh, few weeks off the show, but he is back. And um, how are you liking that new intro? Yeah, I, I mean, it's hilarious. I'm still laughing about it. <laughs> um, I've, We've been expecting it for the last two weeks. I thankfully, haven't been here, but yeah, it's been painful. So I guess the week just gone, uh, uh, not the worst being not a Tedes- Tedesco owner, uh, but y- your site is still imploding. Yes. Um, like, you know, everyone had sort of Madison, Keary, uh, not Keary, Cleary and uh, Pappenhausen all go, but I had the, the late withdrawals of Michael Morgan and my – New trading of Bradman Best, so big old Bradman Best brought him in, got zero points, and now he's being traded out. So, yeah, it's it's going to shit this season. That one really stings. Um, and you're the captain for us for the Supercoach Immortals Challenge. Um, so hopefully, am you I can- still captain or have I been have I been dropped? Oh, uh, we, we thought we thought about dropping you, but I feel like um, we've got to stick strong and um, hope for the comeback. It, it, have you got Cody Walker? No. Don't. And we're also joined by Justin. <laughs> Justin, the coach of World Law 3. How are you, Justin? Good boys. Uh, good to be back. Um, hopefully you're in for a big show today. Yeah, so you haven't been on the podcast since um, pre-season pretty much. How's, how's your team going? Yeah, not bad. I um, had a good first two weeks. Um, I was ranked in the top 1,500. Um, last week, not, not as good. I scored a 1080. Yeah. Just dropped a, a 1,500 spots. Nothing to complain about. So it's not a worse start. That's pretty good. You'd probably say 1080 was about maybe 70 under par yeah. maybe. So like the fact that you dropped that much, um, it's not that much. Yeah. So so you, you were well within striking range. Um, uh, where did you go up to, Timmy, or you went down? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've moved down. I started really well, so I'd hard to sort of move up too much more unless I'm absolutely killing it. Um, I just realised that the person sitting across from me is Justin from World War 3 and uh, he's uh, in the head-to-head super coach comp uh, and I defeated him so I'm just sort of having a little bit of a <laughs> grimace <laughs> moment knowing that that was him. That was one of my small victories I had this week. Uh, didn't go too well in uh, some of the other overall, uh, sorry, in the other head to heads, such as the uh, Turbo Hammies Cup, I lost that one. That one's really painful to lose first round. I um, I scored eleven hundred and fifteen. And yep, I can I'm, see it from here. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't know whether I was reading it correctly, and that was the correct uh, thing I was meant to be looking at. Uh, and yeah, I, uh, I'm currently. Three thousand six hundred and sixty ninth, top two percent. So. Not too bad. Uh, we got some pretty well ranked players. Um, and Jake, <laughs> and, and me, yes, not so well ranked. This is so, Jake, um, you pretty much haven't been on since after after we, round. No, no. So preseason? Yeah, preseason. I haven't been on after any of the rounds. Wow. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, 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 the truth is I actually have to go get my brain scanned um, <laughs> of how stupid I've actually gone throughout the season. But oh, are you, are you actually serious? No, I'm, it's a joke. Oh, Please okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I thought you were but, making a joke but, of a serious situation <laughs> though still. Yeah. But but obviously, yeah, the, I mean, the shit start would exp- – I mean, yeah. it's Would explain your – Would well, explain decisions that you made. Okay, That's so fair. where are you ranked at the moment and what are your tr- trades for this week? Let's get into the trades. Um, I'm, oh, I think, a 27,000th, I think. The way um, I actually went up about 10,000 spots. That's how bad it is, even though I only got, I think, 11.30 or something like that. But at, right at the bottom, it's easy to go up. Um, my trades, obviously, Schuster. I think everyone is probably bringing him in. Milford out, which is which pains me because I've had him for th- pretty much three years in a row and haven't been able to trade him out. Um, my other one, at the moment, I obviously have to get rid of Brabham Best. Um, Brian Toto is looking like my number one to come in. My other option... Maybe Dane Gagai, he looks good on that left edge for South Sydney, which is pretty much the only edge that they attack on. So, I really like it. Um, Brian Toho, me and Mikey are getting in, so it seems like uh, all, all three of us have gone Brian Toho. Uh, Tim, are you going Brian Toho? I uh, don't have the luxury to be able to uh, bring anyone significant into my side this week. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to do the Schuster um, trade and get rid of Little. Which I would have liked to have hold on to a little, a little bit longer, but need to get on that uh, Schuster train. A little bit little, longer. Little's probably only one more week away from topping out, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, one week early is not that bad. Yeah, it's not the worst going to make heaps. Uh, as for my other trade, yeah, like I'd like to be able to sort of bring Fafita in in the uh, second row or someone like Toto, but yeah, there's just no one. I'd, I'd have to let go of someone that's a keeper for me at the moment, and I just don't really want to go sideways. So I think I'm only pulling the one trade this week. Very big. Uh, uh, Justin, trade. what are your trades this week? Um, so lucky for me, I already have Toto, so I get to already have him in. Um, obviously going the same with uh, going the little to uh, Schuster. Mm-hmm. And the other one, I started the season, I went with a, a pick of my heart. I tried not to. I started with... One of my favourite, Luciano Leilua. I thought, I'm going to go with my heart. I think he's going this week. Um, it's just, I don't know who I've got. I had Angus Crichton penciled in because I traded him out two weeks ago. Um, also, I'm thinking about going Payne Haas as a little bit of a pod option. Um, I still believe if he gets even like 65, 60 odd minutes, I still think he's a keeper in that front row and yep. he'll be a pod. So I think it's someone like that or less enticing probably a – Pod in the outside backs, it's like some, like I say, a da- game dang gag guy, or like a. I'm thinking Alex Johnston of an absolute pod if he can go on a run, but I think I'll be going like a forward and probably out of Angus for feeder and Payne Haas, I'd say. I haven't really decided yet. Did you say you're getting Dane Gagai, Jake? No, he was an option. So I've gone Brian Toho, but I've been, you know, swaying Brian Toho or uh, game Dane Gagai. The one thing that probably put me in Toho's favour is he. Um, is the whisper is all over Gagai? Well, yes, and I'm versing. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually versing the whisper this week. Oh, but, really? But I'm pretty sure he already has to, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. But uh, Brian Toto will play the first buy, um, and yep. he's, he, I mean, it doesn't really matter because he's going to be a keeper. Yep. throughout the whole season. Like mean, Dangai guy, unsure if he's if he's you know the, the top four or five center wings, uh, but, but Brian Toto definitely is. It's definitely a good uh, way to justify that one, I reckon. Yeah, I, I said on the Monday podcast with Mikey, um, it's just something to, to think about because we only have 16 trades between then and now. So um, if you have no one in your side, you pretty much can't field a full side from now on out. So you got to be thinking of that uh, a little bit at least. Um, so let's move on to our Turbo Hammy Cup segment. It's pretty early, but I guess we'll go straight into it. So on the weekend... Wait. <laughs> On the weekend, we had some good matchups. I'm sorry, Justin, you're not part of this competition. So um, please um, please chip in whenever you'd like to um, and we'll, we'll get your tips for the week. So where are we? Oh, so you're touching on next week, not so much last week. Well, well last week, I did any of us win? I think you might have been the only person that won. Yeah, I absolutely put a number on the Whisperer. Oh, and I'm going to do the same this week. <laughs> so I'm about to be dominated so, by So question. I'm coming second and... Um, Kane is coming first. But that's, that's just for and against sort of stuff. Like yeah. I mean, one round in. Yeah, so last week, um, the Whisperer and me battled it out. I won. Uh, you actually, 
you had a decent week, Jake. Yeah. But you but were Tim up against. Williams had a better week, a much better week. So he looped Capewell and um, just trump- trumped you there. And he had yeah Josh Hodson as well, which was a an all right. So you're looking in a position to win, nearly. Well, yeah. I mean, if Bradman Best was there, it could have been a different story. But he's still been here by a hundred odds. So uh, this week, definitely, I'm I'm winning, hundred percent. Uh, Cowboy put a number on Dez, um, beat him by 80 points. Kane beat Billy Marion. Um, Con beat Bergs, the 360 crew there. Uh, Joe Fitz lost to Mark Barnes, which we tipped. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I tipped him. Um, Costa and Wuhan Bat Eaters. There was one point in that match. And the Wuhan Bat Eaters won. I hit the Bat Eaters. The Villy Armies lost to Hampo's Hooligans. Yeah, it was uh, it was already written in the uh, the future history books that one was going to happen. I was, I was uh, a bit behind the eight ball with uh, not having two gun fullbacks, him having a trill and me having Pappy on the uh, on the burner, mate. So that was a bit tough. And yeah, I had uh, Ryan James as my saving grace who went down that made it not look like I had any chance at all at the end. So. And that's something I did mention. I didn't have Ryan James and I didn't play him. So that's why I went up in the rankings again. Nice. Uh, Wilfred beat Mikey by 50 points. And uh, Adrian Arnosaurus Rex lost to the SC Spy. Um, that was a narrow one as well. That was a narrow one. But uh, the SC Spy did him by 12 points. And the Raiders lost. So... Good on the Raiders. Um, <laughs> moving on to this week and our tips. We're going to make this real super quick because remember last week it sort of dragged. Yes, so yes. let's um, let's just so the- just, just say your tip. Okay. And, and if you really want to elaborate it, on it, elaborate on it. Okay. Yep. So Ramy Noodles versus the Ramy Whisperer. Noodles. Ramy Noodles, of course. We got to back Ramy Noodles. Yeah, he's he's bouncing back. I'm going to pick uh, my, my, my boy, the Whisperer. Your you, boy, you the t- Whisperer? You, you're, you're sitting across from me. You tipped him. <laughs> no, I've been talking to him a bit lately. I've just been having a chat to him. He's a good guy. I like him. Um, yeah, I like his team. I think he's going to do well. Sorry, Jake. I, I, I tipped against everyone here last week as yeah, well, so, yeah, including he, myself he changed, by the end. He doesn't like us, does he? No, I love, <laughs> I love you, man. He, I just, he changed his tip to the Whisperer last week too, and look how that worked out. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and I'll tip Ramey and Noodles as well. The Kuma Stallions versus Cowboy. House of Wrath. Where are you going, Jake? I'm going, Timmy. He beat me last week. It's going to, to get two in a row. Yeah, I'm back in the Kuma Stallions. I'm going to go the Kuma Stallions as well. We've got a pretty similar side, I think. We're in a, um, so I, I, I'll, I'll back myself this week, so I'm going to back him too. Yeah, I have to go the Kuma Stallions as well. Uh, the Savage Turbos, one versus second, plays Kane, Dr. Kando. So who are we going, Jake? Oh, Savage Turbos. Just looking at his team now. And I, reckon he, I reckon he's got him. I reckon he's got him. Nice. Supercoach experience winning all their games. <laughs> so, so Sav's got this one. Yes, yeah, very good. I'll say you've got a few like really nice little things going there, like for feeder and stuff. But I reckon there's a couple of weaknesses, man. I'm going to have to go Kane. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to tip one. I, of us. I see a trend well, going I, on here. I know who he's tipping in the Marky matchup. It's not going to be Marky. <laughs> Con versus Dez. Uh, Con from Supercoach 360 versus Dez. Who are we going, Jake? Uh, uh, hmm. I reckon Des. I don't really know who either are trading in, so that's a like a, a, a don't know. But just looking at what their teams are at the moment, I reckon I reckon Des. Yeah, Justin. Uh, just looking at the teams, um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Con. Ooh, Timmy. I'm gonna go with Des. Yeah, I'm looking at the teams as well, and uh, I'm gonna go with Des. I'm gonna go with Des. Uh, Joe Fitz versus Billy Marion. Tim, we'll start with you. Uh, Billy! Billy! Justin? I'm back in Billy as well. Yeah, Billy. I'm actually looking at um, Joe Fitz's side, and I, I'm going to go with Joe Fitz. Yeah, because he's got Milford in there. Absolute gun. Oh, did, oh, geez, he does too. <laughs> pretty sure he'll be getting rid of him this week, though. Uh, Costa versus Bergs. Tim? I'm going to go Costa. Bergs for me. Ooh. Costa. Bergs is pretty much at the bottom of the ladder, so I'm going to stick. Hey, he's in the same category as me. Yeah, we are fighting back, though. Actually, you know what? Bergs. Bergs is going to win this week. (laughs) I'm going to stick with uh, Costa. 
Uh, next game, Tim versus the Barnstormers. Barnstormers. Mark Barnes. Barnstormers. Jake Barnstormers. Justin. Oh, I'm going to back Tim. <laughs> nice. I like that, man. I like that. I like getting people awesome. getting around me. I felt really negative when you didn't back me, so I understand <laughs> how you guys feel now because that didn't happen last week. Everyone got around me. And so. Tim, who are you going? I'm going to go myself, man. I'm going to make the cap right captaincy choice. I think he's got a stronger side um, just based on the fact that he's, he's going to be able to bring in two, I reckon, this week, and I'm having to hold off on that. But um, look, I'm going to come home strong and I'm going to make the right captain choice and my bench is going to go solid. <laughs> I'm going to back... Um, the Barnstormers, oh. <laughs> just out of spite. Yeah, there's, there's definitely no spice, spite in that. Mikey versus Matty Perso, the Wuhan Bat Eaters. He is ranked 359, and Mikey is only 13,000. Where are we going, Jake? I'm back in Mikey. Cody Walker there. I don't really know what uh, Matt's going to do with his team, but Mikey with Cody Walker. Yeah, Mikey. Underdog, it's all right. 13,000. He'll shoot up this week. Yep. Yeah, I'm getting on Mikey this one. See, I've supported one of the guys. I've got, I've got it on it. I, I love the bad eaters, mate. I'll just remark. I backed them last week. They're, they're probably my second favourite side. You know, like if I wasn't supporting the Panthers, I'd probably support the bad eaters. But um, yeah, let's go, Mikey. Um, I'm going to go, Mikey. I'm actually looking at their sides, and I like the look of Mikey's side. Um, yeah. Josh Jackson out, so he's going to have to do something there. The Bat Eaters. Uh, Hampo's Hooligans, uh, BJ on game day versus SC Spy. Who are we going, Jake? Ooh. Don't really know. Uh, Spy, I reckon, just based on who they have in their team at the moment. Yeah, I'm saying I'm back in the Spy. I'm also back in the Spy. I would have moonwalked all over Hampo last week uh, had we not had injuries. So I think it's going to be a walk in the park for uh, the Spy. <laughs> And I'm going to go the Spy as well. I think the look of their sides looks quite nice. And, yeah, that's that's why I've gone that. Uh, Living Tavita Loca versus Wilfred. Who are we going, Jake? Hmm. I'm going to go Wilfred. I see that um, Addo brought in Jackson, so he's going to, it's going to be hurt by him. I think he's moving him um, out. Yeah, he will move him out, but I assume it's shoe star, so it's not really like a, a points game. Uh, I'm, I'll go I'll go Addo I can be Addo <laughs> Tim where are you going? I think it's going to be the toughest match of the uh, round um, I said that Liv and Tavita Lake is going to win this so I'm going to back him like I would back the Storm uh, in most seasons except for this one so yeah let's go Liv and Tavita Loka. Hmm, I'm not sure which one of these buffoons I'm going to gonna choose Buffoons but Pick I'll, a draw I'll, I'll, Pick a draw Oh, she bangs, she bangs. That would be really oh, good. Um, I'm going to go Addo here. Um, I think you'll win this one. And that's it for cool. the segment. <laughs> moving on. So we're moving on to the team lists for the week, the games. And we're starting on Thursday night with my beloved Manly. You still love them? I still love them. Um, I, we're just waiting for Tommy Turbo to come back and then we're going to absolute devastation to the competition. I don't know if Tommy Turbo is your main problem. I don't think he is either, but I think he gives the team a lot of confidence. So, uh, uh, As much confidence as you have in his hammies? Or? Yeah, let's not talk about this. <laughs> um, but this, uh, uh, I'm being honest with myself, I'm stacking up on Penrith players because I think this is... One of the juiciest matchups of the week. The Pen- Penrith are just so far above where Manly are at the moment. And I'm going to Captain Cleary straight out. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Jake? And from this game, uh, who stands out for you? Yeah, I mean, Cleary's probably, you know, you've probably got maybe four four to five captains. Um, and unless you have sort of the loop option to cop a, you know, a 12 from some center wing you're not playing. Sub. But- from a sub and you may as well captain Cleary straight out. I mean, he's off. He's coming off a week off. So I think he's going to be Blair and he may, you probably get 50 just in goals. Um, other plays. I mean, the look of Stephen Crichton at fullback is enticing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, a, I guess, another option for me at center wing, but I just think Brian Toto is a safer proven gun at where he is. And he's having 25 runs a game. So the base is ridiculous. And I'm, he hasn't scored a try in his last two games. So, He's definitely due. Um, but as, as for the other mean 
everyone's got Cape World. Jerome Luai has proven to be a pretty good one. Apart from last week where he was kind of – he got shifted to the right, which kind of hurt him because he didn't have Cleary just feeding him on the left. I really didn't um, like that. Uh, what um, what Cleary does much better than Burton does is just frees up a lot of space for – for the 5H just to go wild. But Burton had an awesome game, but I just feel like Cleary suits what Luai is doing. Yeah, for sure, man. They got that, that great combo. And mm-hmm. I, know, I know Jazzy was hurting from uh, just Jerome Luai being named on the right. I was. Very disappointed. You were? I was. You didn't like it? No, I thought he, on that left he was going to have a big game on that left-hand side. And well, I think you have on this week. Uh, I think he's getting my arm bent. Do you have Luai? Yeah, I started with Luai. And you're going to captain him? Yeah, I think I am. It's a shame they play in the first game. Obviously, I don't really like captaining first game, but like you said, it's if, if you're going to VC him, you want him to get probably the 150s or the higher than that where you're going to cop an AE. Ooh. So I'll be happy with a 100 as my captain. I'm, I'm sure he'll be a, some points galore in that game for Penrith. I think um, – do you have Cleary? Yes, I do. Manly have conceded most of their points – on their left side, which will be Penrith's right side, would you be more inclined to go Cleary or are you trying to go the pod play just to... I just find... I don't think who comes up against that Penrith left side. I think they're just too good in that. So they look so yep. slick going that way and I just find they're just dangerous against anyone. I don't think it's a problem. Um, wouldn't say Manly's right side's great defensively either. So I don't think I have any uh, any problems. And I guess there. Penrith are just that good that they're going to get past them yeah. regardless. And, and the only thing with, I guess, Penrith, he's going to have Burton playing left centre instead of Crichton. But Crichton's going to chip in on that around the back on that left side anyway. So I don't think it's really going to affect them that much. And Jerome will go for a run. He loves taking it to the line and going himself. So guys, I, if I had to back him or Cleary to score a try, I'd probably go with Jerome. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, Timmy, w- what do you think about your Panthers this week and who are you um – who are you eyeing off? Yeah, everyone looks good, man. I think, um, yeah, I think Staines will have a good game this week. I think he's worth playing if you've got him in your side. Uh, I think he's going to score a couple. This is his sort of matchup. I think, I don't know whether he's running at Saab. I would like to. No, run at Garrick. And doesn't. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to do the, the visual in my head, but um, okay, that doesn't change a great deal. I think he'll um, get the space to sort of just, with that, you know, back line, just sort of draw and pass, draw and pass, let him do his little speed. Um, he, he's acceleration over a short period from what we saw, the, you know, when he played the Storm and when he just, like, took off and beat uh, the Fox. Uh, yeah, he beat That was that crazy. Was that was pretty good. That was crazy how quick he burned him. So, so. are we all playing Saints this week if we didn't sell? Yeah, I sold him last week. Oh, no. Are you... You'd play him this week, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you'd play him. Like if you got if you're stuck with you got Saab, Simonson, obviously Staines, easy choice. You have to yep. pick him against that manly side. Yeah, the risk first reward feels uh, in your favour this week for Staines owners. Got I think a lot more involved last week. He was having a lot more runs than usual. So oh, if he I picks think, that up again, yeah, I think as soon as he scored, he just got a lot of confidence. So. But also, Maybe too, it wasn't as wet this weekend. So yeah, he was, he's less like in the wet. If he takes a run up, he's just going to get smashed. Yeah. So I, I think the coach would have said, mate, play to your strengths. You know what I mean? Like this is, you know, not <laughs> the ideal yeah. game for you to run up there. They don't want him getting, you know, bashed like that. So um, that's maybe why they didn't go with him at the back. I'd be interested to see how Crichton does go at the back. I haven't really – I know he played in his juniors, but I'd just like to see how – like what sort of fullback – he is, and he, there, and he pretty I, much did it at the start of last year off the bench, mm. didn't he? Yeah, um, off the bench. impact player kind of the bench. Weird, get out there, change Yeah, the I don't really. It doesn't ring a bell in my mind. People tell me it happens, and I, I, unfortunately, every Panthers game for sure. So I just don't remember it happening. But I know. No, don't happened. you remember? He came on the field and scored that try, and the, yeah, there was that sure. Yeah, there was a little chip sure, over the top. No, yeah. not really. I don't. I, <laughs> I wish I could say. I did. His, his hands were like behind his eyes watching the games. Like, yeah. go, <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember a lot of. Um, most of what goes on in my life, but that's fine. That's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Other than that, man. Um. In in Penrith, I think. Uh, if we have anyone play them, yeah. That that's my advice. You're pretty much like you can have anyone from one to thirteen, and yeah. it'd be okay. Like even the number nine, Mitch Kenny. Like he's value at. At the price, yeah, but not at the position. That's not at the thing. position at the moment. Yeah. If it was a bit leaner, maybe. If you have them um, play them, I wouldn't be rushing to go like, moving in someone. Just I have for a question for you, Tim. Didn't you start with Kickow? Mm, uh, you did, but you swapped him out before the first pre-season. Round. Yeah, oh, I yeah, thought you did. had him, and then he's looking two, good. Because I was looking at your team in round two when he went and scored a ton. I was like, I swear he had him. Why isn't he? Why isn't yeah, no, nah, I decided I'd, I'm just going to be heaps vanilla and not. Um, 
I said this last week, I think, um, sort of be emotional in my decisions. And, and it's kind of worked out. Eh? <laughs> yeah, and just sort of um, take a logical sort of yeah. approach. Um, let's move on to the next game. Uh, oh, well, the f- uh, well, mainly, I guess everyone's got getting shoe star, whether that's a risk yep. of whatever stinky fiber you had. Milford. Or I guess little, I wouldn't be selling Watson for him. Watson's got plenty of money to make and he's, the way he played was was great. But yeah, Schuster's a, the most brought in. So Will anyone play him? Oh, I'm, I'm looking, not. I'm I've, actually, I've actually got depth this week. I don't because I'm not making that extra sort of. I think other people are going to have that one extra bench player that's just a bit stronger than mine. So I guess going to be a little bit selective and hope they make a bit of a bad choice in one or two of their maybe ish. But um, yeah, I think I'm going to be forced to play him t- depending on how Barnett goes. I think most people will be playing. But you'll be caught out because Bar. Big Barnett Manly's after first. Barnett's first. Played a lot. I don't I think, think I'm going to the play. worst option though. No, nah, I think he'll still get involved. He he's looks get, like he goes for the boys. Still like go forty guys. He get, get forty in base, and he's he's very he looks good, so good in attack. He's yeah. like they're on the outlet. They go to him a lot. Yeah, he's good so. with the ball because he's a five eight, so yeah. he's going to have that offload. And he's going to be creative too. So it's how good was the try he set up? Like he, yeah. he went through, and then the pass he just wasn't even looking. Yeah. Like well, the thing is, Benji Marshall said on his debut it was the best debut he'd ever seen, and that's a massive um, compliment to come from someone like Benji, who probably would have had one of the yeah. biggest you know debuts. You know, and really, for people knows. questioning his job security, I think uh, like Manly season is pretty pretty bad at the moment so I, I feel like they're just going to stick with him and Manly supporters they're they're pretty much going to call for Dez's blood if, if, he, if, they, drop if, if, if they drop him oh, so. he's a good one, yeah. I mean, he offers so much more than Gazowski even when Syrian yeah. comes back he offers so much more than well Gazowski. I've got yeah. the Goz and I, that's a weird one I've got it's just my <laughs> weird one I took that over with Dell or um, a couple of the other sort of uh, options yeah, in range. a similar range yeah um, just because I kind of have a good, that was a little bit emotional but the other options I would have picked I um, wouldn't have um, but like Waddell no. wouldn't have done anything different anyway. So okay, let's move through this quickly. Ooh. I guess this was a super coach relevant game though. So yeah, um, this Friday it's a, a pretty good game. Just don't forget that the first game is at four o'clock. Ooh, yes. So if, if you are thinking of making trades or holding off on trades, just it's going to happen at four it's o'clock. A good, so good, good um, word. I probably might have missed that. If there's, I- there's only two games on Super Saturday, which is. Pretty disappointing. I'm looking forward to – I always look forward to the 3 o'clock game on a Saturday. But um, Bulldogs versus the Rabbitohs. There's only one side to this one, is there? Guys, do we see a world where the Bulldogs turn up? Justin? I, I wouldn't – I wouldn't put my money on it. Like, I just think Rabbits looked the real deal this year. Fast, Ooh. strong. I think they, they roll them. Jake? Agree, 100%. I mean, the Dogs – they lost 24 nil to the Broncos last week, and they haven't scored a point in two weeks. They, they've, and I mean, they've axed half their team, brought in new guys. It doesn't look any better, and it's, I think it's going to be a tough one for them. Yeah, I think they're going to come out and make a solid effort for about you know 10 minutes <laughs> until um, they run in a quick early try, until Cody you know runs in one, and then Latrell's over, and then Alex is over, and then it's you know 18 nil after maybe 10, 12 minutes, and then. And the first try was scored yeah, in at the I ninth minute. Yeah, I think it minute. might just collapse there for him. And it's, it looks like it's going to be a tough, tough year. You know, I've got no one playing in this game this week. So I'm You death, have no South players. No, I'm death riding this game hard. <laughs> Not tempted to bring in a Cody Walker or Latrell. Well, my trades this week, are, I think I've got Luai. So okay. Luai against Manly. Good, good I feel like same, yeah. he could nearly match what Cody can do this 100%. week. Yeah, I reckon he can. Um, and I'm prioritizing Toho because I think he's a more long-term prospect. And like I was considering Johnson or Gagai, but I think Toho's the Are man. Are you saying that Toho's more of a long-term prospect than Cody Walker, or just more no, of a priority no, no, for yourself? No, then the Rabbitohs back. So Gagai, Johnston, Campbell Graham is one I'm probably interested in. His price still um, is coming down though. I think. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I see Toho as you know everyone's going to. This week, the top 10 traded in. Toa is not in there, and I feel like he will be next week because he'll score big this week. And yeah. it, it, you got to get on these sort of players before they go big. And Fafita is one of the most traded in this week. I got in him two weeks ago, so I'm ahead of the pack. 
To oil shouldn't rise too much this week, so people can afford to hold off. He might he's got no. A, he's got a seventy break even, but that's the problem. I think if you're waiting for someone to come down on their break even, I think the points are more important. It's not necessarily about waiting to come down on their break even. It's just like if there's a bigger priority for you to trade someone else in, you know who you are going to miss a that's, boat. That's you know what true, I mean? Yeah. Or you feel yeah. that you can hold off on a trade like myself. You know what I mean? And you know get him next week and then bank those trades for later in the season. Yep. Um, so, Cody Walker, any of you guys getting him in? Um, you've got Luai? Yeah, Luai. No, he's just at the moment getting in. Walker. So, with Walker, have you been tempted at all to go Luai to Walker? Um, well, I did, at the start, I thought I'd have Luai for a couple of rounds and then probably go to Walker. But how he started, I looked at their draws. They're not... Too indifferent. I think Panthers have a quite good draw coming Panther, up. Panthers have Broncos in a couple of weeks and yeah. they've also got and what, the, Newcastle so and Manly in like four they weeks. They've got one so tough one, I think. But I think next week who they got. They got the, I want to say the Storm. Raiders. Raiders. Yeah. Storm okay. last week. Raiders. Yeah, so for me, it's just going to be probably Jerome and then eventually another 5 eighth with him. Will it be either Munster or Walker? Right. But um, no rush to bring him in. And and I my initial plan was before Best decided to absolutely kill me last week was I was going to bring bring in Cody Walker this week, but I mean other things go wrong and you kind of have to go back on your plans. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and are you getting in? No, you've got Latrell Mitchell. I've got Latrell Mitchell. Yes. So the fact some. that you don't have Walker, Latrell kind of makes up for it. He does, and I've noticed that Latrell kind of takes a bit of points. Um, off Cody Walker. I guess it didn't last week because um, Cody Walker scored his two tries. But the weeks before that, Latrell was getting he was getting the, the try assist where Cody Walker would feed Latrell. Latrell would do his fancy tip on to his to his winger or his center and get the try assist. Where, um, yeah, I mean having Latrell definitely eases the pain of not not being able to bring in Cody Walker. Awesome. Uh, moving on to the next game, Broncos versus Melbourne. Uh, who do we have here? Who are we eyeing off? Um, let's start with you, Tim. Uh, yeah, but everyone's talking Pappy as an option and for captaincy. I think he's definitely an option. Um, but I just reckon that um, the Broncos, you know, having that little win last week, it doesn't mean they're going to back up and win again. I don't think they're even going to come close, but I think they're going to put in – some sort of a better effort than what you would get from the other two earlier games. Mm. Yeah. So I'm sort of steering clear of that sort of captaincy option for me. Um, but, yeah, it's a funny one. I, I, it's like I've got players like Remus Smith and I'm like, I played them last week and they let me down. I'm thinking, is this the week that you play them or, and, you know, or do you over new? Um, Surely you play Remus Smith this week. You'd be running it. Milford and Farnworth, so... Yeah. Yeah, at the moment, I've, I've used in my um, starting CWT. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm thinking about that. So you got to think... You do, go ahead. I, I, like, you got to think, the Broncos, they were nil all with the Bulldogs up until, what, minute 60. Yeah. So they weren't exactly going well. Then they <laughs> sort of switched on the Bulldogs. It was 2-0 to half time. It was 2 nil. I had half time. I tipped... Um, I did a little live bet of 13 plus for the Broncos. <laughs> I just see what's happening, you know what yeah. I mean? But... um. Yeah, I think the Broncos have just got a little bit more heart this year. I don't think they, – they're still going to be a bottom four team probably. But, um, yeah, they, I just think just under Kevy, they've just ingrained that sort of Queensland mentality in them a bit more and, you know, fighting for each other and fighting for the jersey and making your fans proud. And I think they've bought into that a lot more than what they would have under Seabold um, and with all the dramas they had. So I think they, they're going to they're gonna put up a bit more of a show this year. They are going to – you know, be a bit more resilient and you know, hold try hold on for longer in games. And their team, their team's not that bad on paper. Like look nah. at their team, like their forwards are quite quite strong. They've got a lot of Origin players, like kind of up and coming players. Like so, they're no pushover compared to like look at the Bulldogs team. We knew they were a bit of a. Well, the people compare them to the Panthers in the fact that they're a young side as yeah. well. You know what I mean? The Panthers are very young and sort of expected the Broncos to sort of. That's or right. to actually, you know, peak like from the get go, and they and because they haven't, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure around yeah. that. But I think that, yeah, as I said, I think they're going to show a little bit more ticker this year. Whether they uh, can not lose by more than twenty points this week, I don't know. But yeah. for me, in, the, in like out of, out of the Broncos, like I've obviously I've, I'm eyeing off maybe a paint Haas trade. Like I still think he'll be top two, three front rowers this year. Um, so if I think getting him in. Early, I still think you average around the seventy odd. Um, be a pot early, so other than that, ev everyone has the Rickies and 
Um, the news, like I think news quite a safe play every week now after how watching him play. Um, some people have the Mead. I probably wouldn't go with playing David Mead. Uh, I think Asaka probably is one player I wish I started with. I think no one expecting it to be this this good. Does anyone here have him? Anyone have Asaka? Nah. I, I don't, but would you Shot be getting range. him in now? Probably not, eh? Definitely uh, lost. Not with the draw. So. That's yeah, right. they, have, yeah. they have four tough games, the Broncos. I think players like that too, they, they do well for a bit and then you sort of ch- – there's when they're the ones you end up chasing those points. They're, they're not the players that sort of keep that sort of level of consistency up. You yeah. know what I mean? And, we, and you just can see that based on just history, you know, and looking back on what they've done in the past. So. Yeah, 100%. I wouldn't trade him in, but if you started him, credit to you. For sure. Uh, so moving on to the next game, are we? Yeah. Awesome. Um, Sharks versus the Cowboys. I'll let you kick this one off, Jake. This this could go down as one of the worst games of the season. Oh, no, no, second second worst because <laughs> the Broncos and the Bulldogs last week for 60 minutes was an absolute stinker. But, I mean, i gotta, I got to say, like last week for the Sharks, the boys did so well just to, like, knuckle down and grind it out. Um, we had no players on the bench. We were having back rows playing the centres. It was all over the shop. Like our middlemen um, had they play eighty minutes, um, which showed at the end. It was twelve four with 10, 10 to go. Then they yeah. pulled us out. So it was a, it was an unfair reflection. Um, get a full team back this week against the Cowboys, who they've made a host of changes. And they look their team looks weird and terrible, all in the same. Um, ben Hampton at seven. I don't really understand what they've why or what they've done there, but. Clifford dropped, Hampton in. Um, one play from the Cowboys, Murray Tualangi could be worth a look um, in a couple of weeks if he manages to keep a spot when Cole Felt comes back. Don't know if it will happen, but he did look their only he one of their good. only good players. I mean, he shut he, he um, shut down a couple of tries. Yeah. Um, and run the ball strong. He scored a try. I don't know if I was the only person watching the game thinking this, but did he look a lot like? Uh, like a shrunken version of Jason Tomololo, like just a lesser fed mm. version, <laughs> not going to the gym as much, younger version, yeah, brother it, of Jason yeah. Tom. Like the face was just so alike. A few times I was like, so what's going on? No, 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 it's, oh, it's, it's that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. J- Jason ate all his food when he was younger. Yeah, something like that happened there. Um, but, I mean, not much super coach comes out of this game. Um, Sharks, not really anyone you're going to have. Yeah. Cowboys, not really anyone you're going to have. So, I mean, hoping the Sharks turn up. Um, I mean, if, if we turn up, we should win. Um, the game got moved from Cent- uh, Sunshine Coast to Net Strata, same as the other game. I think it's a double yep. header on. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're back at home, our own home ground. I we're think that ground, um, you just, you'll just hammer this game in, yeah. without a doubt, just because of how hard last week was. You know what yeah. I mean? They'll come out and this would be like – it's like if you're swinging baseball players when they swing f- five bats, you know what I mean, and then they get that one bat and then they just – you know, yeah. it feels a lot as this. That's what's what will happen this week. Well, I can only hope. And I mean, the problem with the Sharks running go up in go up in fours because um, our goal kicker <laughs> can't kick goals. Um, that's also, so, that's yeah. cows have named a cheapy second row. Keep maybe keep an eye on him if he can hold the spot. Colin S obviously he's started his career well, but he's kind of dropped off a cliff. So, and other than that, maybe Val Holmes thought he was good last week, but quite pricey. Yeah. Uh, kicking goals as a fullback available. If in the he was in wing. a better team, you'd definitely be looking at him. But for a team that looks like the Cowboys, yeah. Other nah. than that, nothing really interests me. I think the Sharks actually look quite good this year. Um, obviously, Super Coach wise, um, nothing will really can't. Uh, nothing's really standing out to me. But when Sean Johnson comes back, I'll keep an eye on him, 100%. see how he goes, and yeah. I mean, the efforts there. It's just we've been unlucky with injuries and. Injuries through through the game, so I mean, we could have beat, we should have beat the Raiders. Yeah, we should be two and one, but unlucky. Awesome. Uh, and the Titans versus Canberra. How do we think this game is going to turn out? And uh, for feeder, is he a must or a luxury? I th- I think he's a luxury. We don't know about for feeder against a good team yet because the Titans have had three pretty easy games and he scored sort of tries and line breaks in all of them. Yep. Um, if he can do something to the Raiders, um, then, yeah, definitely he's going to be a, I guess, a maybe end of end of season sort of player because um, he knows you can get the attacking stats against the better teams. Yeah. Um, against the low teams, for me, he's going to be, he's going to bully them just like he did against the Cows. Yep. I do feel like he gave Volvi a lot, though. He's had about like, every round 15 runs. I remember the first week he didn't play full game. He was sick. Yep. The second week he came off with a HIA. And then last week, I think for feeder, 
I think whoever he versus, I think he's good enough to score against anyone. Yeah. I think that's something that's in his favour. Um, obviously, if he if he can, uh, it looks like he's got a good combination there with Fogarty. Um, so I think I think everyone probably would have at least looked at him or think I got to get this bloke in. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have him. I went the Tino route, who I I think he hasn't been as bad as people are saying. People want to like get rid of him. I think he hasn't been too bad. A lot of the middles are scoring when Ooh. he's off the field, which is frustrating. Yep. But for feeder, feeder is one of my options to bring in this week. So I think you can go much worse than bringing in for feeder. Yeah, yep. I reckon he's the talking point of um, almost the round, possibly other than Schuster. You know, what I mean, just yep. based on like. If you, if you don't grab him this week and you want him, he's going to go up a little bit more. He's just going to get a little bit more out of range. I think his BE is about four. So um, the thing I got, like I had him last year and I just loved – I don't know, I just liked – he's kind of like a kick out. He's got that sort of, you know, massive upside where the attacking, um, you know, potential's there. He's obviously been purchased for a reason. Then They're going to go, you know, you want to use one of their bigger – bigger weapons. I feel like he, he he might be more of a must have than a not. I'm 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 leaning I'm not getting him just because I'd be kind of ripping my part aside or yep. side apart or sort of going two sideways to do it and it I'm just undecided but yeah, uh, on Tino too, I think this will be the week that he actually has a really good round just may, uh, based on his opposition and the uh, forward pack. I think that he'll really stand up and try and match it and, you know, lead by example. So I think um, you'll see a bit more involvement or uh, if not involvement, but just bigger plays, you know, he might look for that offload a bit more or, sh- you know, show a bit more of his um, skill set against these um, against his opposition. So I, I like him this week. I um I actually think he looks like a bit of a stepping stone to an actual gun. Uh, I think a lot he's of not really pe- much a stepping stone. He's six hundred and ten k. I mean, he's he's pretty no, he's five hundred k. Oh, Tino, Tino, Tino. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Um, he, he's averaging uh like he, 65, 53, and fifty five minutes for the first three games. He was only getting like. 50 minutes last year or 45 minutes. He, he hasn't actually gone up too much. That first game when he got 65 minutes, that was really good signs. But if he's staying at the 53 to 55 minute mark, I think he's probably a sell soon. Um, a line break and only 61 is a bit worrying for me for someone at that price. Um, I know he's probably – he's maintaining his average, but yeah. it, it, there's better options out there. I wouldn't get him if you've got him. I wouldn't rush yeah. this week maybe to get him. I'd just, I'd just see how he goes this week. I've got a good feeling about him. But I'm, I'm very excited then because as an owner, yeah. Um, anyone else? Um, Canberra. Oh, well, Titans. Tyron Peachy. I've found yeah. a lot of questions and talk about him. I'm not really for it. Um, although he did start um, on Sunday, he's only played 43 minutes. I think he came off just after half time and then he never went back on. So, I mean, if he's still going to get the same minutes as what he did if he was coming off the bench, there's not really any appeal. And even though he is available at centre wing, I don't. Know, I just don't see... The, I see there'll be know. games where he'll get you a big score and then there'll be games where he gets you like a 25 to 30. Mm. I think there's safer options like... Getting yeah, I'm not in love with. Um, there's people that are, you know, that are. That Mikey's big on him. Um, and wants to, you know, watch him a bit closer. He's not someone I'm sort of on my radar at all. Um, yeah, just for for those reasons. Um, I think um, Chris is someone like that. It's his, he's going to go up in price this week. So some people might be looking at him. Yeah, no, he was, he's but then HIA, he got HIA last oh, week. Now, so yeah. I mean, he scored three. I think like, was like last I mean, it, oh, so yeah, two, because of his yeah, that well, rolling average. two hundred and thirty-eight k with a break even of nine. So like he he will make money this week. And if he's if his spot is locked in, why is Curtis Scott not in the side? He's injured. injured his rib last two weeks. Week. Two so weeks. Mm. Chris is guaranteed two. I don't know what happens after that, so he's a very risky option. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess the same thing with Ryan James. A lot of people would have brought him in, and that that five that five hurts so much price, right? I think people will be scared off, or not scared off James, but they'll think, oh, he's probably a sell soon because his break even's what? What is it now for Ryan James? It's not bad. It's still low ish. Because he had a sixty before that. Um. So he's two seventy seven. Break even at twenty eight. So after this week. His break even will still be pretty. Depends what he scores, but he still has that. Depends what he scores, but uh, people might be scared off saying, "Oh, he's peaked." When that six goes out of his average, um, he'll pretty much 
he might go up. Yeah, again, he just got to so. ride it out. I think he'll yeah. get to at least like yeah. the th- I mid think three hundred. Sorry, Kate, you're right to low fours. So I think just ride it out till he gets to that price and then move him on. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, just with the bench, they've got Tom Starling there who didn't get used much at all when they were struggling last week, um, short of numbers as well. You know what I mean? Because yep. he was... Um, no, he did. No, he did, did get quite... Because they, had, they, had, no they had three injuries. Yeah, I just remember seeing him for a bit on the bench, sort of just minding the bench by himself, you know what I mean? So oh, they, I, I felt like they could I have brought him... I think to lock. Yeah, yeah. They did. They would have used him at some point, but yeah. I felt they could have used him earlier. But there wasn't oh, yeah. a great, int- you know what I mean. So oh, I don't know why he's not playing more. It looks like, like they're going to rotate those other fellas around a bit more. I reckon he's going to get good minutes. Um, yeah, I, I think he, I think he's a play. Awesome. Uh, Knights versus the Dragons. Who, who do we think is going to win this one, Jake? I don't know. The Dragons have actually look better than what everyone's thought. Yeah, they played right in the Newcastle. They could not hold the ball. Why get Matt? Sibasaki is still named in this team, is beyond me. Um, he single-handedly cost them the game last week. The amount of times he dropped the ball and defensive reads, it was it was a disaster from him. Yeah, pretty bad, eh? Yeah, I, I'm not complaining. I, <laughs> I'll take it. Um, I think it was a great kicking game. <laughs> handle those bombs. Yeah. Well, well, it was. I mean, if you've got a weak link, just keep kicking it to him. It is a tough game. I think Ben Hunt, I think he's been good for, for the Dragons. Um, it's probably toss of coin. I think I think Knights will, will get him though. I well, Ben Hunt's out with a broken yeah. leg, so um, and then thing I guess with Supercoach is Mitch Barnett may not play this game. Yeah, I've heard news. I've heard that he'll play but won't goal kick. Yeah, I heard that too. I've heard a lot of conflicting yeah. reports. So, I mean, they do play late in the round, so I guess have a have a kind of a backup plan if he's a late yeah. exclusion, whether that being a. Fumano or whatever you got. Nah, it'll have to be for me, Luke Brooks first. Oh, yeah. well, he should be in your Yeah, I don't know why he's not playing him. You you were playing him during the um, couple of days ago. Oh, well, yeah, I'm still playing him. Oh, yeah. But um, I guess oh, yeah, uh, it was going to be Ricky. I was I was hoping I'd hear the news before Ricky plays. Mm, so yeah, I'd, on a Friday. Yeah. Who knows? Um, but I guess who else from this? Connor Watson looked really good. Mm-hmm. He's going to keep coming off the bench, but if he comes Ooh. off the bench – and I guess f- com- like finishes the whole game like he did last week, that's going to be a plus. I mean, he was shredding the Tigers up the middle. Um, and I guess if, you know, the half stay fit, he doesn't have to go play half. Um, I, I mean, like Connor Watson play this week for sure, yes? Yeah. I think, yeah. I think he's quite solid. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think, I think he's a play yeah. uh, just Most until, weeks, yeah. yeah. Until you get, I guess, an upgrade. Especially against a team but, like the Dragons. It'll be a high scoring game, I'd, I'd imagine. So I think that'd be something that'd suit him. But, like, if he can sort of score 100 points in a game like that, oh, like, I don't obviously, think he scored a try either, did he? Like, yeah, nah, high scoring game. If he has the potential Ooh. to do that, then he's possibly a play every week. Like, he, he's average, his low score is 60, isn't it? Uh, yeah, then the coaches oh, 50, 54 the first game, yeah. 60 the second really game. Like and coach is big on him, too. You know mm. what I mean? He's real about him. So, the thing that's just annoying me is that, like, if you're going to come and put him off the bench, can you just label him there? Like, no. it just annoys me. <laughs> it, having, it is annoying. I reckon that I reckon he said, Look, I'm happy to come off the bench as a utility, but like that for my 30, sake, I like the th- yeah, I don't want a bench number, give me the yeah. 13 number. And yeah. I reckon that's the only arrangement because I'm a bit like, you know, Oz Tag, you know, you get a little bit like, oh, I want that number and if I've got a weird number it's a bit weird what, what number are you what well, number would you be I will wanted to be 7 or 9 uh, but Mikey was 9 so I ended up with bloody like 3 or 4 which suited because I went with the um, name on the back of uh, Timmy the Jet so <laughs> yeah that's why you named yourself Timmy the Jet A eh? oh, not not because of that it's because of my electric speed <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay let's move on to the oh, roost- um, if, sorry? if someone didn't have Jay and Bradley, if they didn't pick up last week, he's, he's still a buy. He's still good value right now at 450000 Like, people were buying Reed Marnie last week, and I feel like Jaden yeah. Braley is still a better buy than Reed Marnie was last week. Yeah. What's another player I'm eyeing if he can drop down in price, but he scored well last week? I haven't seen him in a lot of teams, Zach Lomax. Yeah. Um, he's just a player. Like, he looks like he gets through a lot of work. I think he's a safe, another safe centre wing. Yeah. To score, he scored. He scored 22 of their own points last week. He scored in, I think, 90-odd. Yep. So, I think he might be one that you end up wanting to finish with too. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was yeah. kind of amongst it last, right, year, so. last year. And he hasn't missed a goal kick in forever uh, either. Like 22 20, straight. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, there, there was one there that you saw on the weekend. Uh, it his own looked try, like it missed. It was his own try, I think it was. Yeah. It went like over the post. Yeah, it went over the post. He kicked some, but, he kicked some really high. Yeah. Maybe that's why. 
because them 50-50 ones, yeah, they've kind of got to call yeah, them. Yeah, I was like a bit like, what do you mean it's gone <laughs> over? And then the commentators convinced me, but I was like, well, all right, whatever. Um, yeah, Zach Lomax looks like a really good one. Um, I guess it's a wait and see, though, depending on how St. George go against better sides. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's good to see him scoring well. Um, the Roosters versus the Warriors. Now, the Roosters are very depleted. Do we think the Warriors might get over and put up a fight? I've seen a lot of people saying like a 13 plus. I don't think it'll be a rollover. I think Roosters still have a strong enough team. Yep. I think there's a chance of an upset, but I wouldn't say the Warriors. What's going on? People are talking about Warriors 13 plus. Over the Roosters. They're off their head (laughs) and they don't watch enough rugby league. That's all I'm going to say on that one. I, I, I think I think it'll be a close. I don't think Roosters will win though. Like last week, the Warriors were getting thumped by Canberra before their whole team like axed themselves. So, yeah, I mean, if if they were seventeen, still the Raiders, they win that game. Yep. And like, what a second half from two of us to Sheck. Yeah. But, I mean, he's going to have to do that for a whole game to beat the Roosters. Like they they are still a well drilled team. And yep. Even without Kiri, I mean, if Sam Walker's all the hype that he is, he's going to come into that team and play the same sort of role. He's been preparing for this, man. He's been, um, you know, they, they would have had him drilling, doing all of these plays. He knows he's going to fall in and do exactly. It's just going to be about whether he, I reckon he's, you know, is he, what's he like? This is his big moment, your first game, your debut. There's all this hype. How does he handle that? You know what I mean? He's obviously got the skill. They don't really hype up too many players before they've got onto a field. You never hear as much hype around anyone as much as like him and Suwali. So um, I reckon he he will come out and he will have an absolute blind well, eye. Think about it. Ponga had similar hype as well. So, and look how he came out. So Exactly, man. Yeah. And after watching one game of him, you're like, I remember thinking, he's going to be in a mall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, One game. <laughs> well, that's a bit. <laughs> oh, no, he, no, no, it's not. It's not. He's a, it, he, it's only because he's had the injuries. He's not been so, Yeah, he, it's, you know, he, he's, Kalen's ridiculous. So if anyone doesn't think he's got the potential to be in a mortal, also needs to have a He's got the potential, but he still hasn't probably reached what he, what he could have in this time. very early in his career, man. Yeah. Um, so Sam Walker, uh, the West Tigers are playing the Cowboys next week. So Luke Brooks will play the Cowboys. And it'll be a nice down, a nice timing for a downgrade straight after that. He'll score a ton. <laughs> and have yeah, a negative, go, negative break go. even. Yeah. <laughs> can't get rid of him. Well, that's that's the same with me. I have Michael Morgan, and he's just going to be a perfect downgrade. Yep. Um, Are you going to do that sooner rather than later? So maybe next week? Uh, possibly next week. Um, just to, I mean, if I get another three injuries from my team, obviously it's going so to change. So on, on the other side of the park, Sean O'Sullivan. If Sean O'Sullivan comes out and scores a 70 or 80 and uh, Sam Walker scores 30... Do you guys go another way? Like me personally, I have Sam Walker, so I'll be sticking. A lot him. of people have him, so okay, yeah. So, so for uh, you have Sam Walker, yeah, I got him. Yep. Okay, so for us two, would would you still go John O'Sullivan? What's the difference in price at the moment? I think it's about sixty k. So I'd probably go Sam Walker, just mainly because you're probably not going to play him anyway. And I think you'll goal kick when Takiyo is off the field. Ooh, I think. I yeah, they're, they're talking that too. I reckon he will. So we'll see. We what don't happens. really know. I mean, the, there's a lot. There's a lot of talk about he'll but, the Kings. So. But even like Sean O'Sullivan, like he played all right last week, but he didn't score very well. Yeah. Um. But the other half of the Warriors, Cody Nicarima, he's looked really good. Yeah. For him actually, and he's scored quite well. I think he might be the highest averaging. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah probably. And, yeah. Yeah. And he's dual and everything. What's everyone's opinion on the obvious big talk of a Tedesco out? Tra- yes. Oh yes. yes. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this. I'm a big fan of it. Well, you, you, I heard you on Monday re- saying it. Yeah. Well, so you did listen to the podcast. I did to that while it was a short. <laughs> um, I see merit in it. I don't think it's as crazy as people are talking it up to be, mm. but I don't have the guts to do it myself. I think it's the right. Re- if you think you get me a Tesco because you think he's not going to score well, I think that's probably the wrong reason. Yeah. Because well, like, he's still going to be involved. Like, I know when he was at Tiger, was Tedesco, Tedesco ball, and he was mainly a runner, but I think he's more complete now. Outside him, he's still got the Morris, the Morris brothers, Tupo, Joey Manu. Yep. He's still going to get points. Last week's game, he was not really involved. He outscored Luttrell. Like, yeah. Rabbits outrun him. Um, I think if you're going for that reason, I think, I think he's worth looking for at least a week or two. 
because you don't want to trade him out and he's still banging out 80s, 90s. We yep. want to bring him back in. Um, so I don't think it's worth it. I do understand people want to jump on that that rabbit run and the Latrell, but I think if it was anyone else but Tedesco, I think more merit to it, but I don't think you can trade out Tedesco. Yeah, Tedesco in a, in a well-beaten side in against the Rabbitohs. Got still scored. Junk. I think it was on like 16 or 18 at half time. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I guess they were chasing, so we had to go and get. Yeah, you got, you got like a nice little force drop out. Got a got a try without a line break. But I think you got a line break later in the game, though. No, nah, no, you didn't we get paid a line break. <laughs> no, we got no, we got like a line, like a proper line break later. Or line no, break you didn't get paid any line breaks. Oh, must be line break assist. No line breaks. No, line no breaks. we had other attacking stats in there other it's than the try. No, nah, yeah, force drop out. He kicked a goal as well, <laughs> which was pretty handy. He missed one too. Um, what I'm going to say on that is um, Teddy, for me, is obviously a future immortal. He might <laughs> – Ponga might not be, but Teddy definitely, he's um, – like, he's, he's a gun. And he's going to – he's going to step up in the spot of uh, Kiri sort of, you know, not being absent and sort of um, – taking that responsibility on, I think, a bit. I think he'll be go- looking for the ball. He'll be hunting around Hooker and sniffing around and, you know, running off people. He'll be he'll be getting himself involved. So, um, yeah, it's obviously appealing to look at Luttrell um, with his uh, matchup over the next three weeks um, particularly. But I think that it, I just don't like sideways trades. And it, unless you're, you've got, like, in your mind a crystal ball where you're like, yeah, no, nah, Teddy's going to fall off the, you know, a bit. He's only going to be getting me 70s. And I think Latrell's going to get me 120 if you're every week consistently. Then there might be an argument for it. But, um, yeah, Latrell's also that player that sometimes in the bigger games too, he will he might not go getting involved as much, you know what I mean, and just let the others do his thing. Oh, we're, you know, we're out. And we, he can sort of just take a bit of a backseat sometimes. It's up to him when he wants to or when he needs to get involved. So, yeah, for me, I love, I love having Teddy, man. And at the price he's at, yeah, he, you, you've got some options to spend that money elsewhere. And I think the, the reason that people are considering it is because you've got, let's say, Tedesco Moylan is your 5'8 and fullback combination. And they can turn that into Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell. Like, is that a better combination than, than say, Moylan, who you're not going to play, and Tedesco? And that's what people – they're seeing this. Like, they, they, they click they, – they look at their trades. They go, all right, Tedesco out, Moylan out. What can I bring in? I can bring in two mm. those, 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 those kind of things make sense. I guess it makes mm. – yeah, depending on your team. If you can, like um, – if you're sort of um, bringing two great players in and losing – one like amazing, the, the, best know, the best player that, but yeah, exactly. Losing the best player to bring in two bloody great players and get flicking off someone very average, yeah. uh, then there's an argument for it. But I think what Ken says, you probably have more guts to captain Tedesco besides them two. I think you lose that as well. Yep. Like, yep. I don't think I wouldn't go, I'm captaining Cody Walker. I'm guaranteed he'll get me like a strong score with Tedesco. He has that, so he's doubling his score where kind of might average that out a bit. I think you're happy to captain Tedesco every week. And, yeah. and speaking from experience, I don't recommend the idea of getting <laughs> Tedesco for two other players. I was going to ask you, what what made you go without Tedesco this year and just knowing how it went last year? Well, they, the start went well last year without Tedesco. Uh, yeah. It wasn't until I think around I, I, five that he scored that 200 and then that's when it all went to shit. Yeah. But, I mean... I went with the idea that he's going to have to average 95. Did I think he was going to average 95 plus for the first, you know, five games? No. But he's come out and absolutely torched it. I mean, I went for the risk of being different. If, say, Tedesco had a tough start, I'd be, you know, in the top 1,000 and the, time, yeah. the bulk of the players of everyone playing who, you know, has Tedesco are all around, you know, yep. around the middle. Um, didn't come off. Oh, well, now I'm concentrating on head-to-head. Um, but... I mean, you, you take that risk at the start and oh well. Awesome. And last game, um, Tigers versus the Eels. And this is on Monday. Um, is Ryan Madison back? He, yes, uh, his name to play. yes. Interesting. How, how did the how did this game go Ooh. last year, Jazzy? Uh, not very well. well we're, what are you, well, uh, a Hill Para supporter? Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. Tiger. I can't remember oh. the game, but I, I, you look like a Para supporter to well, me. I'm going home. <laughs> No, but you've got a bit. You've got a bit of. Um, you've also got that. Um, you know, I can see you going. Come on, Benji, <laughs> or you know, fucking come on, Robbie, come on, Robbie. Oh, hopefully, 100%. hopefully, we, we haven't done well since we've them since we've been at Bank West. 
Um, we have a quite, we've gone pretty good, like record wise, when we versed them at A and Z. Um, just Tigers, just what Tigers turn up if it's um, the one we played the first two games. Oh, you're talking about the Bank West 50 nil walloping. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was the opening. I was there. Yeah, yeah. The opening. Um, <laughs> they, they walloped us. Um, so I, I, if we can stick it out, our fours defend well. I think we can we can handle them. I mean, it was, if we can't defend, I think we'll. They could put easily put a 30, 40 points on us. I'm actually not rating Para this year, so I, I've tipped the Tigers. Yeah. I, I think the Tigers uh, have looked good. Like even against Canberra, like they put up a fight for a while, and da- off, Dane yeah. Laurie is really he good. Looks good. He, he looks, looks so good. He looks good. He looks. Last week he took a, a bomb, just came flying, and he looked like it was, was gone. Like he looked like he can do anything. Yeah, um, just nothing. Um, he can probably get more involved in the attack a bit. Like I think they're still trying to. Get in there. I think he's yeah, probably a, more might be a ball. keeper. I think if he keeps up, keeps up this. Yeah, oh, yeah. At the moment, especially in the centre wing, but um, I'll leave yeah. it on your bench at least later in the year. I think it's definitely. It won't last longer than this year, though. No, I feel like he he's top four centre wing at the moment. Wish he was mm. front row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really straight in my front row. Really, yeah, unfortunately. Oh, that was funny. But yeah, in, in terms of the super coach wise, obviously it's Nofaluma. I think he's got a. I think he's got a high BE, I think, this week. Yeah. Um, I think he's like around 100. So he's probably everyone having his eyes on him. Um, and and he'll also play the first buy off for him as well. Yeah, so I've got my eye on him for there. Uta Kamanu got a try last week. That'd be good for his, his price rise. It was a good try, yeah. too, wasn't yeah, it? He's got a bit of 40 metres out, a bit of a, a bit of a run there. Luke Brooks got the try assist. <laughs> not, nice boy, hopefully a bit more of them. Um, not really anyone else. Um, so with Ota Kamanu, I asked Mikey this on Monday – since he scored a try, this is very rare for front rows to score the try and have the big game um, so early in their price rises. When that leaves his rolling average, would you guys be looking at upgrading or are you going to like cash out and wait a bit longer? Yeah, I think, well... Like, do you think he has more potential? Like, say there's an injury in the front row. Do you think he's got potential to go in well, there at the starting He's already side? getting 40 minutes a game, which yeah. is, I didn't expect him to get that much. Um, we've got our pretty much our starting forwards all there now. Yep. Um, I think first off the block somewhere, you would probably offer him Gowie, but I think he's not too far. I don't think he'll get that much minutes. Most people probably have him and Lenyu. Um, yeah. I think Lenyu probably at the moment is probably a, would be a sell before before uh, Uta Kamanu. Uh, even, even if you're in trouble and need to play someone, he, he's getting – even him and Len, Lenyu both getting at least like 40 points. So it's not the worst – that you, you're going to cop. So he say he scored 64 on the weekend. If he goes 37, 37, and then his break even's 55 in a couple of weeks and he's 320K or something. The problem is what's there going to be if if, like, if you can't afford to go up to someone? Yeah. Like especially in the front row. Um, like I see myself finishing the season maybe two guns and I don't know if I have a third or a fourth real gun. I don't know who there is maybe to drop down to. Yeah. I that, think that will be a big thing. Um, yeah, I think wait and see with him, you know what I mean? Just see how the scores go. You might want to hold on to him and depend, just see how his prices yeah. go. But he, like, I think he's definitely got potential to get more minutes and get a bigger role within the within the team. So it's interesting you've uh, tipped the Tigers here, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, I think I think that Parana's great too, and I think this game's definitely going to be a lot closer. The coach really seems to believe in his team, and they have sort of showed some pretty good effort. Um, what, are you backing them just based on the fact you've got no Para supporters and you've got like two or three ti- two Tigers? Oh, I've got heaps of Tigers in my <laughs> yeah. side. But, so you're but a bit biased no, there. to be fair, the Tigers have looked good, like against Canberra. Uh, t- t- take out the Roosters game. They, yeah, they've looked all right. For dollar yeah. value at three dollars fifty head to head, if that's what they're like, you know, stay at or if you want to get on now, I think that's a pretty good price. But um, yeah, I'd be more inclined to say that Parra will um, will win the game. They'll get the job done. They'll get like the two it, points. even Parramatta last week, they were twelve four with ten to go against four to, uh, thirteen Sharks players. Yep. So like, I mean, they piled it on late, but it wasn't reflective of what the game was like. They, yep. they couldn't score against us somehow. No, nah, they needed um, used to get gassed. And I, I guess Moses wasn't there for. Like the last part of the game, but I mean, yeah, still that I don't know. I don't see much of the hype either. In this Does anyone area. have Junior Paula? Yes, I, uh, I, I don't. Watching him like, like last week, he didn't get as much minutes. I think they like. I don't know if they're going to like rotate. Last week they gave a lot to Nathan Brown. The first couple of weeks was a lot to Junior Paulo. Mm. But I thought Junior Paulo. I think I was like, I'm looking at him. He might be the top two front rower. 
But I don't know if that's going to be Question a Question marks now. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to like be like, all right, you're the front row that's going to get the big minutes this week. Yeah. Time. It changes here week so to week. I guess it's kind of like Takiyahu as well. The Raiders like, rotation are a bit like they swap around the roles and responsibilities yeah. and shift the bench a lot. Yeah, I they don't did know. did that last year. Did yeah. most people trade out Maddo? Oh, God, I didn't have Maddo. Yeah, I traded out Maddo. Trade out Maddo. But I, I, feel, Maddo. I feel like him playing on the left anyway. Um, yeah, he's he like probably a, not priced as w- what he's going to score. I he will like be. 120 BE as well. Something yeah, like so he, he will lose money this week. But what about, for, what about for the people who didn't trade him last week and they still got him? Obviously, you, yeah. you keep you, him. You keep him, you play him. Yeah. Um, you got to take the Ooh. hit, but... Um, for I people mean, who sold him, with him so it doesn't yeah. Really for people who sold him last week, like I wouldn't, you wouldn't be bringing him in, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be bringing him in, or wouldn't be that devastated. Yeah. What, one pot I've looked at this week from like um, Parramatta, got my eye. Like, Mike Asivo, I think he's he looks a bit back to his best this year. I think he's someone that you, you could have there. You know, on matchups, he's got well, probably the highest floor of any center wing. Yep. I think uh, lowest floor. Yeah, low Ooh. and the highest, and then yeah. the highest. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. I think that's one thing that you get with those sort of players. Uh, but he's piqued my interest a couple couple of times this year. Once he gets a Sevo ch- chant going in the uh, stadium, nice. he wants a bit it's, more. So if it's, it's at Bank like West, twenty seven yeah. tries in twenty five games there or something. He loves Bell Bank West, and he's and he's on Moses' side now, so he's not got um, glue hands. Brown yeah. not passing it to him, so he's kind of guaranteed a bit more ball. Glue cool, hands, Brown, I like with um, Gavison wrapping around as well. Yeah, um, that's also a good thought. Um, Sire Papali, he's worth a mention. Um, so he's on the bench again? Yep. Um, he um, was performing well off the bench as well. So for me, he was someone I was sort of kind of considering I could move out um, and bring in, but it's just not the right week, I don't think, and it's not that important. Yeah, so. it's it's, very, it's a tough one because he's off the bench. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the Eels bench, he's definitely the best player on the bench. Um, and I mean, he's probably going to get you, you know, 40, 40 to forty-five minutes, maybe. Um, but is that he's good for is, fifty? Is, is, is like that's a warrant a trade in? Uh, yeah. he, he's he's definitely a stepping stone. Like he's I only like made a peachy. Tw- he made twenty-four k. Um, his break even's thirty-nine, so he's not going to make that much money unless he scores a try. Yeah. And uh, can you really bank on that anyway? Um, he, he's probably just a stepping stone. But you know, his scores have been pretty good: sixty-four, fifty-four, and fifty-eight. That's a lot so. of work. So uh, you, you wouldn't be disappointed with that in your side. But with the second row, um, we've got second rows like Barnett scoring 70-plus every week. Fafita going 100-plus. Um, and Crichton, who's hasn't done much. Oh, I mean, so right, he's played round two one. games. Round one, he got nine in the last game. In, in a team that they got beaten quite comfortably yeah. and got, still got 55. Okay, let's go to Facebook questions. Um. Adam Sargent, I'm torn. I can get two of these three into my team. Toho, Gagai, and Pappenhausen. What do we reckon? Oh, Toho, I have to have him in. Toho and Pappenhausen. Yeah. Leave out yeah. Gagai. Yeah, I agree with those two. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think Pappenhausen, yes, and then Toho over Gagai. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Johnny Ranara, anyone risking the Teddy Tiller trail trade for four weeks, use the extra cash elsewhere. Well, uh, we discussed that a bit, but Saf, you're the one that... Yeah, we, we discussed it. Um, I feel like depends who you're upgrading then. Um, if you, if it means you're getting in Cody Walker as well, maybe. What do you reckon? Oh, well, it I just mean, depends I, what makes you feel comfortable, yeah. Yeah, don't you reckon? And, and know that it can go horribly wrong and yeah. Teddy can burn you. And Latrell could score 12. Yes, or 112 <laughs> Yeah, who knows what Luttrell? But he does. He does look quite good. Luttrell. He's heavily involved in their attack. Not so yeah. much the, the work. You know, he looks in his fitter. own end. He looks yeah. a lot um, but he's he just sweeps on that left uh, off Cody Walker. Yeah. I mean, it just it looks so dangerous. Uh, Travis, do how many players should we aim to have for the first buy round? Seventeen. <sighs> you're not going to get seventeen. That's nah, a seventeen. Because because when you sort of think about it, you're not yeah. going to have a fullback. Yeah. Um, unless Pappenhausen doesn't make Origin, which I doubt. Yeah. Um, probably not a halfback. And then you're probably not going to have a halfback either. If you got Cleary and Walker. i got Luke Brooks. I doubt you're going to hold him <laughs> <laughs> till around 13. Um, so I guess you're probably going to look at, what, 13 to 15 maybe. Um, yeah. I mean, you're not going to get that many guns. There's a few ones that you can maybe hopefully, like hopefully hold till then, like – um, Charlie Staines, uh, Staines, Staines you Lenu. hold then. Lenu, you're going to hold. Otto Kamano, you're gonna, maybe you're going to hold till then. Um, Dane Laurie, I mean, we talked about before Dane Laurie. Co- Connor Watson, Jaden Braley. Yeah, 
obviously yeah. the Rickies and yeah. So there's there's quite a few of our cheapies that everyone has that will play round thirteen. So I mean, yeah, probably looking at thirteen, fifteen ish. Yeah, I I think feels like it's been ages since we played with buys. Yeah, I know. Mm. I think usually I used to get around maybe the twelve to thirteen odd, and because the problem is you end up getting the seventeen odd. It's so hard to get your team. For the next buy, you're yeah, that's right. that's right. you got the bragging more. rights of the peak rank b- before <laughs> yeah. the second buy. B- before you plummet down. Just try yeah. and play for the 1,000 weekly prize. <laughs> oh, no, that's <laughs> when um, everyone's misses teams yeah, start. Well, everyone's making a team. <laughs> yes. Um, Cameron Robbins, is it worth dropping Colum and Tungy and putting in Capewell into second row? Bring in Toho. 100%. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Adam Thompson, uh, should I prioritise getting in Nofo to cement solid four centre wings and or jump ship on the Cody or Monster train. Yeah. Oh, so I'd be going Cody or Monster. Over. I'd be going Cody or Monster. It depends on his team. If he doesn't have a tot all, I think he's a... Well, no, but he said he, has, no, he always set, has three guns or something. Set, yeah, three guns. So he wants four oh, center wing guns. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are playing um, like a few center wing cheapies anyway. Mm-hmm. So I feel like match them there, match them at 5'8". And like you've already beating them by having three premium center wings anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lachlan James Davis, Welch to Tuo or Saab to Fergo? Welch to – oh. I'd go Welch oh. to yeah, yeah, I would too. Welch to Toho, although Saab – Surely he's got to go over. Nah, surely he's got to try. Nah, surely you're not playing Saab. Oh, though. no, you're not playing him. No. So s- unless you're forced to playing it, Saab, mm. I'd go Welch to Tuo. Yeah. Uh, Tim, Sam Brown, should I go Little for Schuster via Watson or get in Cody now and trade Little and Tino for him? <sighs> nah, that's a tough one. I think I, I was listening to the um, the All-Stars on the way here and they sort of had this same, this same conundrum. Like, is it worth missing out on Schuster to get, say, a Cody Walker or a Munster? Yeah. Um, it's, oh, it's a tough one. I think... <sighs> I'd say if he, has a, if he doesn't have a gun 5'8", I'd bring him in, but if you had yep. like, if you had Jerome Luai or you had a Munster, you want to get a double. Yeah, I'd probably go with Schuster. Yeah, yeah. Like if he's running like a Watson and a Moylan or something like that, yeah, I'd bring in the Munster or, or Walker. I think you I want think, one of them. I yeah, think that's least. the best way to go about it. That's the best way to answer it. Um, I've never heard and I haven't heard anyone answer it like that. So that's a good answer. Um, Travis, do is Moylan to Schuster or B Smith to Fafita more important? Hmm. Brandon, Brandon Smith playing the Broncos, so I'd probably hold on to Brandon Smith and then get in uh, Schuster this week, bank some cash, and then... It's a, the thing is, you're not you're not going to really be able to get for Fita, say, in the next couple of weeks. You probably could if he's banking that money from that oh, Schuster trade. Oh, yeah, true. Well, B, he, B. Smith scored 77 last week as well, so... Mm. Be like, aware that Moylan might score really well this week against the Cowboys as well. I think they're, 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 score, they're, they're absolutely And they score four for. points next week against the Roosters. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think I'd, I'd jump on the Schuster. Like, yeah. Just for the long-term gain, I wouldn't be worried about, oh, Moylan might have a good week this week. Overall, That's he's true. not going to do too great. So yep. you, you, you're going with the Schuster on that one. Uh, Theo James Allen, is Tyron Peachy a decent pot at centre wing? His last three uh, – we know his last three scores. Mm-hmm. Scoring at 1.41 ppm base stats. To average 41. Um, he's just pretty much saying his stats here. Yeah, I'd like him to get 60. If he could get 60 minutes a game, yeah, I'd lock him in. But around the low 40s, the minutes scare me for him. Um, and he's got his tacking stats every game, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't really like There's it. There's something about me looking at that. If I someone I came up against him that had Peachy in their side, I wouldn't be too like, oh, yeah, no, got Peachy, you know what I mean? Although, so that's the way I think it although is. they've um, he's got. He's been not named to start at lock this week, so that could mean he's done he's, that last week. He, did, he did, did it on Sunday. Oh, as they well. did. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Luke Pritchard, uh, Little and Jackson to Walker and Schuster, or Jackson and Walker to Walker and Ray Stone. There was too many Walkers in there. So, so <laughs> I, I, sh- I should have prefaced that with Lil and Jackson to Cody Walker and Schuster, or Josh Jackson and Dylan Walker to Cody Walker and Ray Stone. First one. First For, one. The first uh, Ray, one. Ray Stone's not an option at all. Yep. I agree. Cool. He's not going to have a sh- That's yeah. Just he had. He did well last week. I think he got a bit yeah, more. Got, try. got to try. He got a little bit more. Minute. He's like two hundred k with a negative break even. So I no. see why people are tempted. He um, could be out of the team in a couple of weeks. Josh Williams have both Kiri and Lamb to drop this week, along with Sam Walker. Should I 
get Schuster for the cash or Seawalker for the points. If I get Schuster this week, I'll get Seawalker next week. But I'm ranked 488, so thinking I should prioritize the points. Yeah, you, yeah, you should prioritize points. points. It sounds like he What's wouldn't he have a gun there if he doesn't have 600. Kiri. You think Kiri would be his gun? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you have a gun. Yeah. Five, eight. I, I Go think Walker. He has to get Walker. Yeah. Get Walker. If yeah. you want to keep that rank, it, yeah. like the cash generation, you might be too far gone this week. If, mm. if you miss out on a Walker, yeah. Walker could go spaz this yeah. weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've gotten up to the name. Here we go. We're, we're looking at these comments. What? Oh, <laughs> Ola Targa, Carl Tafia Spitzenberg Litogu. You've done well. Thoughts on Avarillo to Ozarko? I don't like it. No. Ashley John oh, no, no, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Yeah, I, I think Ozarko's probably made. Oh, yeah. well, he's got to trade to someone because uh, Avarillo's dropped. Well, so, I, I mean, if he doesn't have uh, – what, what's Ozarko? He's about 440, I think, at the moment. So if he, does, if he doesn't have Ferguson, maybe go Avarillo to Ferguson. Yep. Um, But at, at that price, I don't really know if there's much – I'm all about Fergo, man. I like, you know, yeah. he's doing backflips. He wants to, he wants to get involved, man. Yeah, get him. I yeah. like him. I'm so upset I didn't have him. I was starting with him and I took him out. And yeah, yeah, I, I think Azarko, like, his break even's negative, but he's we missed the boat. You've missed the boat, and he has the, a tough run. The he draw coming up is terrible. Melbourne Penrith. Penrith. If he scores twenty Penrith. points. That's quickly going to roll out of his average. Yeah, exactly. And drop back down. Ashley John Hatch. Teddy at his peak, maybe a sneak trade with a proven six seven nine and Manu who doesn't pass. I don't know. We mentioned a bit of that, but I mean, that is it's, a funny it's, one. Huh? It's still it's still a weight on on like if Tedesco is not going to be involved. Yeah, like he'll touch. He'll still touch the ball. Like, you, they can't play without giving the ball to Tedesco. Yeah, he's yeah. going to be their main outlet still, regardless. Hmm. Yeah, it's been the theme nice. of the podcast day. Eh? I mean, it's the theme of a lot of like it's, it's ever since Monday. Um, or ever since Kiri went down, that's what everyone was yeah. thinking about. Can I get rid of Tedesco and do this with my team? He plays like run. first receiver, second receiver. I remember when I went a couple of years ago, Tigers versus Roosters game. Some people were watching him play. Like he'll be on the right, next tackle he'll get to the yeah. left. Like he's just, he's going to get involved. Yeah. Like he just wants the ball. Sniffs about. He's just going to be there. His base stats will probably go up. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know if they'll, they'll go up. I reckon they will. You have more runs. He's still getting through 20 runs a game. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Christopher Abud, would you trade out Maddo to Fafida or Angus or Welch to Paula or Takeo? Oh, I'd probably, I'd probably go Welch. Welch. I wouldn't yeah. trade Maddo. Yeah, I wouldn't trade Maddo. Probably the Welch he, too. He's would. a bit of a pot at the moment, so. I would. I, I, I wanted to get rid of him the week before he got his HIA. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not I'm not about him yet. I think that he's, he'll be good later in the year or whatever, but... He just he, just the value that he was at for his points. I don't think the um, the the dollar value is right there, and what for what he's showing, and with the um, you know the attacking upside that he has shown in the past. Yeah. The one thing with Madison, I like with Feeder, man. So I, I don't have him, and I would if I if I had Maddo this week, I would get rid of Maddo. For Feeder, for, for had from his big side. games though. Like, yeah. can he really go three in a row? I know it sounds weird, man, but I think that. Yeah, I think for feeders, like kind of one of those ones. If you get if if you get him, I don't think you're going to be too nervous. Eh? Hey, yeah. I think you'd be more nervous about not having for feeder. You're not going to be too nervous about n- not having Maddo. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> that's so true. That's the way. That's my thinking. I'm just real nervous about what I don't have, not what I do have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but still with Madison, I don't know what his ownership is, but I'm assuming it's quite low. Yep. Um, so it's definitely a, a pod. Um, we we've kind of only got what, like one game and quarter. I mean, he went down early in the game. He got HIA eight in. Um, Para do have quite a, a an enticing draw over the next say month or two. So there definitely is attacking stats in there. Running off Moses still. Um, He's at eleven percent. Eleven percent. You got to think a few of those teams have probably already given up. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, yeah, I I wouldn't be trading out Madison even for a, yeah. a feeder gun or yep. whatever. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, 100% for it, but I I would do it for my side. I feel like I wouldn't do it this week, especially like save the trade this week if, if that's your biggest issue. Um, it's perfect time to save a trade if that's what you're thinking. Um, Jared Oliver, Gaga or Toho for the next four rounds? So, uh, I mean, I've gone Toho um, mainly because I think he's going to score bigger this week and his base stats are good for me um, and he plays round 13, but... Just based on the next four rounds, who would you choose? 
I don't think you can base it off four rounds, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I think if you're bringing, bringing either of these in. But say. To, oh, you're definitely going to keeper. Gagai, probably to origin. Yeah. Um, so, just on that, like, I don't think it's a, a really four weeks. Because you're not really going to trade either of those out after four rounds. It never works the way you, you mm. plan it to anyway. You want to all. Yeah. I think to all. And let's let Justin answer this one. James Roberts to Alex Johnson, Brian To or Dan Gagai? Brian To. Uh, I think Alex Johnson, he can get you that. I thought about him and I thought he can get you those. 13. Four tries and you're cheering, but he can get you 13 like he did on the weekend. To all, if he doesn't score... He's getting you 40 or 50, and if he does score, he's in the 90s. I think that's a total easily. Sweet. Um, let's move on to our bold predictions, and our captain choice, and we'll wrap it up. Now 20 in. Right. Let's go. All right. Um, Starting off. We'll start with Justin. Okay, I'm going to go. So my – I really had VC Luai, Captain Pappen, but I think I'm just going to straight Captain Luai. Yep. Uh, bold predictions, I'm going to – Gonna double down my captain Luai. Um, he's gonna hundred plus mm-hmm. back in that. Um, we'll get another one. I think Tino will get his first try of the season today. This week, this week, he'll go ton up with a try. I reckon he'll go ninety plus. Yep. Um, yeah. Tig- That's right. Tig- Tigers one to twelve. <laughs> <laughs> so Sass is all over. Tino that. ninety plus. Luai a hundred plus. plus. Yeah. And then Tigers 1 to 12. <laughs> uh, what are you doing, Tim? Um, I'm going to go um, the man we were talking about just a little bit before. I think Alex Johnson is going to um, score at least two, probably three this weekend. Um, I'll, I'll bag him for. Um, I'll bag him. I'm going to be, we said, like, I'm going to take 10 off it. You know, listening to you yep, guys yeah, last yep, time. Yep. So I'm going to go 90 for uh, Alex Johnson. Um, I'm going to say that, jeez, uh, mate, uh, I think that, can we come back to me? Like, I've got my captain since I took, with my captains at captain? VCs, yeah. I've got no idea at this point, <laughs> so I'm just going to be honest and not, not right, mislead let's go, anyone. Let's go, Jake, we'll come back to you. Um, I can't, like, my VC doesn't really matter because I can't really loop at all. So yep. my captain, at the moment I've got Pappenhausen, obviously other options, Cleary, or if I'm, Really game enough Latrell, but I think it's Pappenhausen, Cleary are my, are my two options yep. there. Captain Housen. Captain Housen. Um, uh, my ball predictions, I'm going to go Brian Tor 100 plus. Yep. And Cam Murray, 90 plus. I've got Cam Murray, and although, although he hasn't he hasn't got the attacking stats, he's still got the base there. Um, I just think he's due a try or some try assists against uh, an awful team in the Bulldogs this week. Yep. Um, well... Uh, I'm Captain Cleary straight up. Um, I don't think I'm going to change that. Like, no way I change that. Um, and my ball prediction, I've never done this before. Ooh. But I'm going to combine Staines, Tuo, Luai, Cleary, and Capewell. Five oh. in one team. I'm pretty sure Tim tried to do that last last year. <laughs> he tried to do a whole Panthers team to score 100 plus or something. 450 yeah. plus. All combined. Yeah. For Jeez. all five. We have to add them all up. <laughs> oh, actually, Mate, you got calculated <laughs> for that. He calculated for that game. No, there's five players, so... So he's yeah. basically saying they're going to score, you know, just but a that, bit but under that's 100. With, that's with, an average of 90. No, but that's where Cleary is captain. Oh, well, that's, that's, oh, that stinks. <laughs> what is yeah, that? No, that's crap, bro. Right? <laughs> okay, well, 400 plus without captain. Oh, okay. No, for five players... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not bold, man. This is a game that with that a is bold. team that's is deciding it right now. Not bold. Well, I think Capewell's going to score thirty six, so that's what I think. We'll take Capewell out of it and put four okay. players. Okay, I'll take Capewell out. Capewell out. So, but you, I don't you think Stain. You ask him for too much mass. But Stains is in there. Be. Stains is in there as well. So I think he's going to score. Uh, okay, let's say seventy. Okay, so seventy Toa eighty. So that's one fifty. Cleary one twenty. Two seventy. Luai at 90, 360. So 360 for them four players. Just a shout out to our mates at the uh, 360 <laughs> podcast too while we're on that. Um, so you like it? 360. Oh, right? I don't know. You've confused me that much, much that I'm going to accept it. Whatever. <laughs> or, okay, how about I just go Charlie Stain 70 plus, Toa 80 plus, yep. 
Luai 90 plus, Cleary 120 plus. That's defined. People know what they that's what to. Yeah. That's what people have asked for, and you're giving them what they want. I like that better. And Capo sub 50. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's that, that need five in there. Timmy, you've, you've decided yours, mate. Yeah, I have. Okay. I'm going to um, s- stick with the old... Um, Do you have five players as well? Or to, no, to no. Totally I'm, like I'm, only, I'm only going to go two and then I'd like to chuck in a funny one. Like, okay. Not like a bit of a, like, there was a bit of something a bit different. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go... What was my first one? Get a, get a mug. So it was, was Stainsy Boy, wasn't it? No. no, no, Alex Johnson. Johnson. Oh, Alex Johnson. Okay. You started. Two, okay, no, two, probably three tries, 90 plus. <laughs> okay, Staines will score two tries with uh, with 80 plus. Yep. Um, Alex Johnson will score two tries with 90 plus. Yep. Um, and Sam Walker uh, is going to leave us with a open jaw for a lot of this game and he's going to score uh, which I think on a debut for Supercoach 80 would be pretty uh, pretty big. So you're going to go 70? Yeah, I'm going to take 10. <laughs> and uh, uh, just as a, as a weird one, um, a ref's going to go off for a HIA this week. <laughs> He's going to have a head collision or something. Carol. He's going to trip over himself and okay. bump his head. Well, but a ref is going off for a HIA this well, week. I think – who was it? Was it Ben Cummins that should have gone off because he couldn't talk? The oh, that bloke. was painful. That was I, painful. I almost it's wanted to stop with – because like, I'm like – there's like nails down the th- – yeah. stop doing it, man. It hurts. He know? trooped on. What happened? Yeah, good on him. Oh, he, he lost his voice during the game. He, he still was screaming out and he – it was Go painful on, listening. Get on, so you know that just that. Oh, I mean, it was probably uh, the best thing about that game. Oh, to be honest, it was the Broncos. Yeah. It was the Broncos Bulldogs, Bulldogs game, so uh, it was the only good thing about it. Game I was worried about him. No, I could. <laughs> I was as well. I was worried about Lindy Collins. Yeah, Did that, you see yeah, that? That was sickening. Yeah, they, they were checking his pulse. Yeah, like they legit thought nothing. It, 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 it reminded me a bit of the Cheekham one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like yeah. How, how like you were looking at? I was like, oh, like I'm, I'm, I'm worried here. Like, it, yeah, like one of the guys from Cool Runnings were going to come out and go. You're dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. And on that note, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, big show today, but we pumped one out. Cheers, guys. See ya. Would anybody like some brown cake? I'd like some brown cake. I'd some cake. I'd like some brown cake. I'd some cake. I'd like some brown cake. some brown cake. I'd like some cake. some cake.